This is my Builder Bag Backpacks book. And these are just a few of the bags that you can make from the book. There are actually 15 different projects in here using a unique template that I'll let you have a look at in just a second. Um, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make this bag as well, which is a variation on the template that you're getting. Underneath this panda face, you have a pocket. This is zipped at the top. It's all fully lined. You've got extra loops at the side that you can either hang a charm from or make another strap for. And you've got adjustable straps at the back as well. So we'll have a look at that in just a second. But just to show you something really different to that style of backpack, this is another one of the designs in the book. So it is a backpack. You've got your two shoulder straps that go over the back. But to open it, you simply pull the straps open. And there's a, a kind of a hidden pocket on the back there as well. So it's a very different backpack to the traditional one that you've just seen. But there's also drawstring bags, um, like um, the kind of things that you take to, to school for PE or to ballet class or something like that. And I've even incorporated um, the oilcloth bag, which has got different handles on it. So it can either be a handbag that goes over your shoulder or it can be a backpack as well. But this is the unique thing about the backpack book. And this is one of four of my builder bag books now. So we have occasion bags and tote bags and subtle bags and backpacks. So this is a folder. So it looks like a hardback um, book, but that's it's kind of the best of both worlds because this is hardback. But inside here, you've got your paperback and this does slide out if you want it to. This is your template. And the backpacks and the satchels have a larger template than the previous books, so you can make bigger bags with them. And I'll show you in just a second how you can pick out all of these different areas to draw around. Now, the beauty of having a, um, a template like this is that there's no pinning. There's no enlarge by 200%. You can fussy cut with it. You don't have to cut out paper patterns. You don't have to cut your book up because normally patterns in books can be printed on the pages. It's reusable, it's wiped clean, and it's absolutely foolproof. It's such an easy way to cut out your patterns. But from this one template, I've come up with 15 designs, 16. Now you've got panda face. Let's just have a look at some of them. So in the beginning of the book, I will take you through um, the tools that you're going to need, that you're going to find useful. And all of the bags have different techniques as well. So this is understanding the template, materials, your fabric supports, the tools that you're going to need, how to make different types of zips. There's an oops section. So maybe your curves aren't curvy enough or one of the panels turns out to be too long. These things happen. And then these are some of the projects. So they're all very different. They're not all fun, bare-faced bags. There's a classic one with piping around it. Depending on the type of fabric that you're using, you can make some really beautiful, elegant bags for ladies, for gentlemen, or fun ones for the kids as well. That's the oil cloth bag. This one teaches you piping. You don't have to put the piping on there if you're a beginner, and you think that may be a little bit complicated. There's different ways of inserting the zip and making the zip panel. That's one of the simple drawstring bags. And on each one of the projects, I'll highlight which part of the pattern you need to use, or the template that you need to use. I'll take you through all that in just a second. Different ways of binding. So some of the, um, the backpacks are bound on the outside, like this faux leather one. Some are bound on the inside. But I try to make them all look very different. And of course, you can add your own take and your own personality on these as well. But if you're a complete beginner, I can't think of an easier way for you to begin making backpacks than follow. Oh, there's even a purse. That's an extra project. So you're still using the same templates as the backpack or part of the template of the backpack, but you're making a little purse out of it as well. So that's just something on top of the 15 projects that you have. Because you have the elastic bound around here as well, when you do choose the project that you're making, you can use that then as your bookmark to keep your pages open. So let's take a look at the way you're going to use the templates and let's take a look at how you're going to make your panda bag. So my bag's a variation of the bag that you see here, 
You've got all of the information as for all of the materials that you're going to need and the finished size that it's going to be, and a whole um, table of how to use your template. So this is the actual template, and you can see all of the little holes that you're going to draw around um, are named. So you've got the round backpack, the curved flap, that's an ear, this is a tab that goes on the end of a zip, um, the pocket, the pocket flap, this will become a lot more clearer when I actually show you how we're going to draw around that. But for this bag, these are the, um, the patterns that I need to use. So this is the round backpack. That's this one here. And it says place on fold. And then I've got the bag base. I've got the shape of the bear at the top. That's actually upside down on the pattern. And the bear faces down here as well. So the way we're going to do this, I'll need to cut on the fold two of these from outer fabric and two from lining. Now I've already cut out my outer fabric and I've put fusible fleece on the back of it as well. Um, the Tweedy Bear didn't really need any substantial um, stabiliser. I just put some interfacing on the back of it to stop the weave from moving because it was quite a loose weave of fabric. But if you've got a finer fabric, if you're using cotton maybe, then it would be an idea to um, put a fusible fleece or some wadding or even some foam stabiliser on the back. So what I've got here is two pieces of fabric and I'm going to fold those over. So I'm going to cut two at the same time. So take your pattern, I can actually be a little bit more frugal with my, my fabric here. If you're using um, a thick fabric, or if you've already got your fusible fleece fused to the back of your fabric, then cut these out one at a time. Because when you imagine you've folded a thick piece of fabric in half and then another piece that goes around it to cut the front and the back at the same time, one of them is going to be slightly shorter than the other and we want to be as accurate as we can. If it's just fabric you're cutting, like with this lining, then that's fine, you can just fold the, the two pieces over together. So I'm following round back pack. And I'm just going around the marks. And that goes all the way down to the bottom. Just go back over those a little bit. And then I simply cut out the shape. You can, of course, use a um, rotary cutter, ruler and mat if you're cutting the straight pieces. And we'll just cut across the bottom. And those are my two pieces. Now, if your fabric is very thick, then the best thing to do would be to cut one half at a time. So, in which case, you draw around one side on one piece of fabric, make a mark down the centre, and then you can simply flip over the pattern and draw around the second half. So that's the front and back. I've already cut the pieces out of um, the outer fabric, as I said. But this time I've changed the face a little bit. So instead of having the bear face, I've tried to make it a little bit more like a panda face. So I've already cut the pieces out here and I've, I've just used felt. I like felt particularly for the, um, for the face here because you don't have to hem it. So if you're not using felt, if you're using fabric that frays, you'll need to sew two pieces together and then turn them inside out so that you've got a nice neat edge. But felt is so easy, it's so, so easy to sew as well. So I have added extra bits on this one, so I'll show you what happens here. So I said this one's upside down, but you can see 
there's the shape of my nose and that's cut on a fold so I've got two symmetrical pieces there's my nose shape and then I've used the large eye and this white section behind there, this egg shape, I just cut that out myself. I just wanted to look a, a little bit more panda-like. I used some spray adhesive to lay those all up and then sewed them together on my sewing machine. You could use a running stitch or a blanket stitch. You could hand sew this if you wanted to. So that's entirely up to you. The only other thing I'm going to add are some doll eyes or toy eyes just in the centre. So you could use um, googly eyes if you glue them on with a really strong glue. I've got an incredibly sharp pair of scissors that I'm just going to make a little hole through there. If you have a, something like a braddle, then that would work well too. I just need to be a little bit bigger than that. So be careful that you don't stick your scissors into your hand. In you go. I've left the hole nice and tight to hold that in place. And then I'm going to put the back on. Now the back of these doll eyes, I need to make that hole bigger. Um, it sticks out rather a lot. Fine if it's inside a teddy head, but not when it's in a bag. In you go. And that's it. So what I'm going to do is to put the back of the eye on and that just squishes onto the back and then where this post is sticking up I'm going to cut some of that off if you wanted to make this even more secure you can put some glue on the back as well but now I've got a little bit of character coming to my to my panda the eyes always do it, doesn't it? That little bit of shine from the eye just brings it to life. So, on you go. Back goes on. And again, for me, I just want to cut that down a little bit. They're not my best scissors. Right, so let's get making this up. Um, so I've cut out, oh, this is the angled flap. So again, if I just show you where that came from, place on the fold. So that would have been folded in half when I cut it out and then draw around this section. But again, that's highlighted in the book. That's that one there. So I've tried to make it as clear as possible how you're going to use this. The nice thing about the templates is that they are transparent, so you can see through them. So if there's a particular area of your fabric that you want to highlight. So maybe it's, it's not so much for the bare face, but if you wanted to put a flower, for instance, there's a print on your fabric, right in the center of the pocket flap, for instance, you can see through this. So you could position that flower wherever you want it to be. It's also wipe clean. So if you do get pen marks on it, just give it a wipe with a damp cloth. It folds in half, so it's easy to store. But oh, and the elastic around here makes a good bookmark as well. So when you're storing your template, it can simply pop inside there. And I've saved my page. OK, so let's start making up the bag. I'm going to make up the flap first of all. To fit the magnetic snap, that goes on the lining section of the flap. I'm just going to fold this in half and crease it to find the center point and then measure one inch from the bottom of that point. Don't have the clasp too close to the edge um, because when you come to top stitching it or hemming it you won't be able to um, sew around it. Now just to make this a little bit stronger because I'm only using a 
a thin cotton. I've just put another piece of fabric on the back of there. So I've just put a, a little bit of um, basting glue and just reinforced it with a piece of fabric. So here's my snap. And the way these work, I'm going to put the back of the snap with a hole right over the mark that I've just made and the two dash lines either side. And then I'll draw through the dash lines. Take a very sharp small pair of scissors or your quick and pick and make two little snips. And it's the thinner part of the clasp that we put on the flap. So push the prongs of the clasp through the holes and then take the back again, push the prongs through the holes and squish that open and that's fitted. The thick part goes on the, on the main part of the pocket, we'll put that on later. Now these two pieces, so that's the face front and the lining, are going to go right sides together. And I'm going to sew all the way around apart from a small gap in the top. So I can turn it the right side out again. There's a quarter of an inch seam allowance and that's included in the pattern. I'm just going to cut across the corners to cut down on the bulk. Make my corners sit a little bit square. And then we'll turn this the right side out. And I'm just going to use tweezers because they're to hand just to push out the corner in that corner. like so. And then I'm going to iron from the back, depending what type of felt you've used, a synthetic felt doesn't normally iron very well, it may well stick to your iron. So if you've got a cotton lining then it's best to press that from the back. So I'm just making sure the seam is sitting right on the edge and then I'm going to edge stitch all the way around the seam. That will help to keep the seam flat and it'll give a nice, neat, professional look. So just where that opening is, I'm just folding under the edges. Like so. I don't need to top stitch across the top because that's where I'm going to attach the flap to the bag. So there's no point in stitching over the same line twice. There we go. So I can lengthen my stitch a little. I've sewn the bag on a 2.2, so I'm just going to go up to maybe 2.6. And because this isn't a seam, it doesn't have to be strong. And I'm just going to sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge. The second half of the magnetic snap is going to go on the outside of the pocket fabric. So we'll put the face to one side. I've already put the fleece on the back of here. So all of the outer pieces have fleece. And I like to fuse any kind of wadding or fleece or batting to the outer pieces. So this is three and a half inches from the top. Um, because that's the bit that you feel when you touch the bag. So it makes the fabric feel more luxurious. Now just in the same way as before, although I don't need the little bit of backing fabric to strengthen this one because I've got the fleece on the back, I'm going to put the clasp over the mark that I've just made. 
draw a line either side two little snips all the way through the fabric push the prongs through pop on the back and squash them open so that's how my pocket's going to look but I need to put the two pocket pieces together now so again right sides together with the lining and just like before I'm going to sew all the way around but this time leave a turning gap in the bottom snip off the corners turn it the right side out this time I'm just going to edge stitch across the top I don't need to sew all the way around because again it's going to be um, the seam that holds the pocket to the bag so I don't want to stitch over it twice so we'll take one of the bag outer pieces I'm just going to make sure this fastens in the right position so I'm going to put the two pieces together like so and then this one is just going to sit whoops two and a half inches from the bottom so I'll have a few pins to hold that in place Looks like a panda in the snow at night, doesn't it, on this fabric? Oh, I've got ears to do. Forgot the ears. Oh gosh, should read my own instructions, shouldn't I? I can leave those pinned in place anyhow. Let's open that up and I'll pop a pin in the top. Let's see if we're getting his ears. With the ears, again they're made from felt, so I don't need to turn them inside out. So I've got two pieces of black felt and I'm just going to sew around the edge. On the instructions for this one I actually used a faux suede um, and felt and that was really nice. Oh you could use a fleece that would be nice as well but I did turn them inside out but I'm, I'm just not going to for this one I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Not with felt. You could make it really furry and there's no reason why you couldn't change the shape of the ears, um, make them pointy for dog ears. I wouldn't put the nose shape down the front if I was going to do a rabbit. But you could do really long floppy ears and make a rabbit out of it. So have some fun with it. Okay, so the ears are going to go just underneath there. That's better. That's a bit more panda-like. Okay, so now I'm going to sew just across the top of the flap so I can still lift that up, move that out of the way and then sew around the three sides of the, uh, the bottom of the pocket. That's where the opening is, so I'm sewing that closed at the same time. And just to make sure when you sew pockets over the seams here, go backwards a couple of times and that's really going to strengthen the seam because that's where any kind of stress is going to be when you put things in and out of the pocket. So that's the front of the bag finished, there's my pocket, it's nice and deep, fastens over perfectly. But let's do the, uh, the zipped panel next. So again I've cut out my strips already, so on this occasion you'll cut out the long piece on the fold from your pattern and then you cut that in half lengthways so you end up with four long strips, so two for the outside and two for the lining. So let's take the zip. This time I've used a continuous zip but I've put two sliders on it so they meet in the middle. 
and I, my zips are normally a little bit too long but I prefer that because then I've got um, I can move the slider out of the way if I need to and I like to cut off the the stoppers on the end the metal bits and keep them out of the way right down there okay so slider side down and we're going to sew along the normally with, with zips on the tape most zips have got like an extra a woven bit that's a slightly different sh uh, shade it leaves a line down the center so i'm going to sew along there and i'm going to sew all the way down one of the front pieces first of all i'm not putting the zipper foot on my sewing machine because i don't always need to and any of these sections if you prefer to pin then absolutely go ahead and pin all the pieces together I just like to line up the edges and so so I have the zip on one side then I'm going to sew the remaining outer piece to the other side again right sides together so I need to make sure that the edges here are lined up I'll sew from the zip side and sew all the way down here so that's how the outer panel's looking what I like to do here also is to squish away any of the lining away from the end of the zip and top stitch. I think the top stitching again gives a nice finish to it, but it also helps to stop the, the underside of the zip folding in on itself and perhaps getting trapped. So I'm just making sure I'm folding that out as I'm sewing it. Yeah, I've got a nice neat finish. I'm just going to move these sliders out of the way. If you're only using one slide or if part of your zip's open at the end, then just put a few hand stitches over there to close it while we do the next step. So take the webbing, and again, all of your instructions are in your instructions in the book. And we're going to cut a piece or two pieces that I'm going to slide the D-rings through. Now I haven't got D-rings this time, I've got rectangular rings. And I'm going to slip that through, fold it over, and sew to one end of the zip, facing downwards like so. So I'm just going to put a few stitches across there to hold it um, within the seam allowance. You don't have to put these on. But it does mean that if you wanted to put a longer strap on there at some point, um, you've got somewhere to hook it. Or if you wanted to add a charm or a key ring or something, you've got, you've got a loop to hang it off. And again, a little bit of metal hardware gives you back a professional look anyway. Okay. And then the end panels are going to go right sides together and sew across the end of the zip panel. So take it easy as you go over the webbing because it is going to be quite thick there. And to give it that nice finish again, oh come here, I'm going to open this up, push everything towards the panel the end panel and top stitch. This is where a denim needle will come in handy and again because you've got a lot of thickness of fabric there and again take it easy as you go over the webbing. So again it's a nice finish and by folding everything downwards from the back so it's all facing down this way then your, um, your loop naturally wants to stick up. So let's do the same at the other end.
fold it over, everything pointing down, and so. So that is your zip panel completed. There is a different option for the zip panel depending on the type of bag that you're making um, where you'll put the lining on the other side of the zip now um, but this one because I'm going to hand sew the lining in at the end um, it's actually the easier way of doing it to be honest I just need the outer panels so let's start to make up the bag so let's take the back panel and my two shorter pieces of webbing that I've already cut I'm going to thread these through the rectangular rings and these are going to be sewn to the bottom of the bag and again all of your measurements are going to be in there. So we'll have a couple of pins in here. You could put uh, clips if you prefer. If you have some of the um, the Clover Wonder Clips, those work really well. And I'm just sewing within the seam allowance again, so quite close to the edge just to hold those in place. Like so. Then the remaining piece of webbing, we're going to cut that in half. Take one end of each and thread it through the slider, back over and sew across here. And go over that a couple of times. Two reasons, to make it strong and secondly to help stop the fabric from fraying. You could use a zigzag stitch there if you prefer. So my second slider goes on the other end in the same way. And so, then each of these are going to go through the ring at the bottom, back through the slider, out the other side of the slider. And then those are going to be sewn to the top. So when you're threading these through, the seam that you've just made here, or the edge of the fabric, is going to be facing upwards. So lay that facing up through the ring at the bottom, back through the slider. over the other side and through. I'm just going to fold this in half to crease the centre so I can make sure that I'm going to fit the, the straps evenly either side. So there's my centre point. I'm going to put a pin in there as well so I know exactly where it is. And then let's pop these on evenly to either side. And so.
then we'll start to put the whole thing together. So I'm going to just tighten these a little bit so they're not getting in my way. That's it. So let's put the zip panel around the front section first of all. And again I'm going to fold this in half and put a pin in the center. There is, um, again I mentioned earlier, the trouble troubleshooting section. What ha well I've called it oops. What happens if things go wrong, if things don't fit exactly? Because there are ways you can tweak it. Fabric is a bit of a devil because some fabrics have, um, they've got their own minds. Some fabrics grow a little bit as you're sewing them. Some will shrink a little bit as you're sewing them. So we're going to make our fabrics behave themselves. But basically, um, as we're sewing this, that, that, that's going to fit around there like that. But as you're sewing, if things don't meet up perfectly, so if this section doesn't meet exactly with the end here, we can trim a little bit off this. So if you, if you end up with a panel that sits like this, you can trim a little bit off. And on the other side, if that's a little bit too long, this can be trimmed off. You know, it's not the end of the world. Putting pattern pieces together is a little bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle, but there are ways of tweaking things and making them fit if they don't go perfectly the first time. So where I've put the pins in there, center to center, that's the important bit because we don't want the zip sitting slightly to one side. We're going to put lots of pins all the way around. This is one um, example of where I do use an awful lot of pins. Dressmaking or sewing around curves. Be careful not to stretch either pieces of the fabric because as you're going around a curve you're going to have part of the fabric that's on the bias. So it will um, stretch if it's pulled. There we go. And then I'll do the same around this side. And when I've got both sections lined up, I'll sew them together. Okay, so that's how we're looking at the moment. What I can do, it's got a hood on. Um, what I can do at this point is turn out the corners and just make sure it's nice and smooth. So if you've got any pointy bits or your the stitch line isn't perfectly smooth, that's okay because you can just go over it again right now. So just the same as I did this way, I'm going to do the same with the back. So again, fold in half, mark where the centre is. I've already still got my pin in there from the previous one. And do exactly the same. So we're going to pin and then sew all the way around the edge. So that's how we're looking at the moment. So now it's time to sew in the base. So before we do that, just make sure that the zip is open, as you won't be able to turn the bag out the right side very easily. And the way we do this is to line up the edge or the corner of the bag with the corner of the base but not so that the edge of the base meets the seam we need to overlap that by a seam allowance by a quarter of an inch so in effect this fabric of the base is lined up against the bottom of the bag fabric so we'll have a pin in there and do this on all four corners, so overlapping slightly so that it fits. And then when you start to sew this in, 
we start a quarter of an inch in. I find it easier to actually start sewing maybe halfway down the base instead of right in the corner. And then stop a quarter of an inch from the edge, needle down, turn the whole thing around and then carry on sewing. Right, so that is the outside of my bag finished. So let's turn the whole thing the right side out and you'll get an idea of what it's going to look like. So now we need to make up the lining. The lining section is made up in exactly the same way as the outer section, but without the zip. So where the zip would be in the two long strips that you've cut, you'll need to press over by a quarter of an inch each side of the long bit. One side of the long bit, sorry of each side. So this makes sense in a second. So there's one. And then do the opposite side here. Most lining fabrics you're using will be, um, they won't have a right or wrong side if you're using plain fabric. Um, if you're using a print or a pattern fabric then Press these towards the wrong side. Okay. Whoops. And then we're going to sew these to the end panels, just like we did with the outside, but you're going to leave a gap. So when the whole thing fits together like so, You'll have a gap down the centre here, and that's where the zip's going to go. So let's just pop these on, I'll show you what I mean. So keep that folded bit folded back. Line up the raw edges together. And there is the gap for your zip. Do the same on the opposite side. So that you have a big, long, rectangular gap right down the centre. Like so. So the rest of the bag you're going to make up in just the same way. So fold this in half, crease the centre. You could add pockets at this point if you wanted pockets in the lining. You could put a patch pocket or a zip pocket on there. That's entirely up to you. You do have the instructions in the book to do that if you so wish. But just like we did with the outside of the bag, Line up the two sections here and sew all the way around. And then of course the base goes in in the same way. No need to leave any turning up or anything like that. So just make the whole thing up just in the same way but without the, the straps and the bare face and the paraphernalia. This is really simple and quick.
So that's the lining section finished. Now we need to sew the two pieces together. So you'll find the easiest way to do this is to turn the lining the right side out and the outside of your bag inside out. And then push the outside inside the lining. So match up around the curves into the base. And then we're going to sew around the edge of the zip. So you can see where you left the gap for the zip. And we're going to sew with a slip stitch across the bottom here and then all the way around the edge. Now I'm not going to pin this because I can see it fits perfectly. But if you want to put a few pins around there, that's fine. So let's start with a knot on the inside to keep it out of the way and neat. Just move that zip pull out of the way a little bit. And then we're going to do one stitch into the edge of the zip, into the seam. We don't really want to see these stitches on the outside of the zip. So go in there and then come on out through the fold of the lining. Once you get going with it, it's actually really quick to do this. You just need to be quite accurate when you get started. If you wanted to, you could use um, an adhesive glue stick and just baste it in place, first of all, with glue. But again, smaller stitches look more professional. At the end of the day, this is on the inside of your bag. So if you're not selling it or giving it away as a gift, it doesn't matter that it's not 100% perfectly stitched. Nice if it is, but don't beat yourself up if it's not. So again, just all the way around the opening, just catching small stitches as you go. So this might seem quite time consuming, but out of all of the bags in the book of this style of backpack, this is probably the easiest way to do it. There's no adding bias binding um, or turning through, bagging out as they call it. So please don't look at this and think, oh, hand sewing. It's probably the quickest way to do it. So my zips sew neatly into the top. I just turn my bag the right side out. And after a final press, we'll be finished. So I would go around the edge of the seam now and press it flat to give it a little bit of, of definition. And there's my bag finished. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you'd like to see more, then press the red subscribe button, which is on the bottom right hand side of your screen. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, but it just means that you'll be the first to know of any new videos that I'm going to upload if you turn on your notifications. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy making yours.